we're talking about USB in this session, and um, we are three guys, uh, Hendrik Schwartke down there in the first row of the auditorium, Sega Schumel is already standing on the stage, and my name is Ralph Spenderberg. And, uh, well, uh, why USB? Um, can you... Um, wait, wait, where's the... Do you have a lighter shoulder? <laughs> Okay, so um, why USB? Well, um, I don't know if any of you remember the Teensy framework a couple of years ago. Uh, the Teensy framework was able to simulate hit devices and you could compromise systems by simulating, for example, a keyboard, which would then enter malicious strokes, keystrokes on your system. And back then we played around a little bit with the Teensy framework and we thought this would be great tool to actually test device drivers in the different operating systems as well. So to simulate some totally different devices and to misbehave and to see how the operating systems would um, respond or react to that. Uh, because of time constraints back then we weren't able to actually um, go further with the research and uh, forgot about it a little bit and then Sergei joined our team and uh, he then proposed to do this totally different without hardware, uh, just virtualizing everything and uh, do some massive fuzzing uh, using USB. So that's what we want to talk about and uh, we want to show you how we can actually do millions of tests in a very short amount of time to actually test different device drivers and to crash them. Um, so uh, to get you on speed on the past research on in terms of USB, you might have heard about bad USB uh, just recently this year. Uh, a couple of researchers were able to actually reprogram the firmware in mass storage devices and USB flash sticks to pretend to be something else. For example, again, to be a malicious keyboard doing some keystrokes on your system. So you plug in a normal flash stick and uh, it turns out to be uh, a keyboard. Um, then you might have heard of the face dance. The face dance is a uh, genius tool. It's a, it's a really great tool. Uh, it has got two USB um, uh, connectors and you can connect two systems to it. One victim system and another controller and you can then actually do some USB fuzzing. You, uh, the face dance is able to simulate any kind of uh, USB device and you can interact with the other system. The problem with the face dancer is it is slow. So um, that's why we, we have one and we used it a lot, but that's not the, the way we want to, wanted to do it because you could just do one test in maybe five seconds or uh, ten seconds. And then you might have heard of USB fuzzing for the masses. Uh, that was one of the first attempts to actually do it in a virtualization environment. Um, but still we do it a little bit different, but uh, uh, just to make you aware of the fact that there are, uh, some other people tried it first. Um, so uh, let's see. Um, to, to show you the impact, why we want to actually take a look at it, and I'm sorry for the, uh, for the uh, uh, slides, there's something at the bottom uh, cut off, I don't know why currently. Um, but uh, I, th I think we can explain everything to you, so uh, it will work. Um, to show you why we want to actually analyze this, while well, those bugs might be very critical. We've just chosen two bugs of the last year to show you how critical these USB bugs might be. Um, they might lead to code execution either on Windows or on Linux. So you plug in a USB device into your machine, and the USB device executes code in your kernel space. And that's what we wanted to do, and that's what we wanted to find out, and what, what we wanted to analyze. So, uh, already nine years ago at Black Hat um, Las Vegas, two guys postulated plug and root instead of plug and play. Um, still today, we're still finding bugs, we're still finding bugs in USB drivers and we're still looking for them and we will now show you what we've done and how we uh, actually try to do it. Okay, well, uh, we want to talk about USB at, uh, we just got uh, 25 minutes, so we just talk about USB at high level and if you're interested, uh, just read the specification, but it's about 600 pages long, so there's not enough time. 
Okay, so well, uh, USB, um, we got uh, a split view in two different parts. There's a driver initialization and a specific driver functionality. And we're going to talk about uh, driver initialization. And well, on Linux, you got the USB core driver, which, done the, which does the uh, generic um, first uh, initialization for plug and play cap uh, capability. So um, at USB, uh, the data goes over the wire at the physical layer. And at the logical layer, you got some, in, um, some endpoints, um, logical uh, links, uh, unidirectional. And well, um, at the enumeration at the, at the beginning, after you, plug, uh, after you plug in the USB device, uh, the host system requests some data from the USB device. And the USB device delivers some structured data called descriptors. And there are some um, information like the power consumption, the identification number of the vendor and product, and so on. And on, uh, based on this, uh, on this information, uh, the USB core driver selects the best fitting driver. And well, we got some of them. There are the hit driver for human interface devices like keyboards or mouses and joystick and joysticks. And well, the mass storage driver for USB sticks. And of course, there are some vendor specific drivers. Uh, for example, a Wi-Fi USB driver and UDLFB, which is a driver for portable graphic cards connected by USB. And well, some of them got access to other subsystems of the kernel. Um, the Wi-Fi USB driver got access uh, to the network stack and um, the graphic card uh, may, uh, got some access to uh, the frame buffer. And if you are able to uh, just trigger a bug in these drivers, you also may you may also affect uh, the subsystem, and this, this could be interesting. Well, if you are on Linux and you plug in a, a USB device and um, you run the dmessage command, well, this is similar to what you will see. Um, there is, uh, above the red line, there is the USB core driver output. Um, there you can see there are some information from the, from the information exchange at the beginning. And there are two interesting fields, the ID vendor, ID product field. And well, you can resolve them to HTC, and there should be uh, there there uh, is a pocket PC sync, and uh, the USB core driver uh, selects based on this information the best uh, uh, the fitting driver for um, these device. And well, our goal is to try all um, try out uh, all of them in the uh, Linux kernel or in other operating system. And well, and well, we re uh, well we realize this by. Uh, Using our virtualize uh, our virtual USB fuzzer framework, and um, well, uh, we used uh, QAMO and KVM for host or target or victim virtualization, and for providing USB data to the virtual uh, to the virtualized operating system, we used a uh, uh, USB redirection interface or protocol. And the USB redirection protocol and interface was designed for providing some. And USB remote uh, functionalities to QAMO. And this is the architecture. Well, at the left side, there is the host system, at the right, the guest system. At the host system, you got the, the application USB redirection server. And the USB redirection server uses libUSB to attach a virtual USB device and then acts like a stop driver and will redirect all uh, USB data to the QAMO interface. And QAMO is able to parse the data, and then, we'll, uh, then QAMO will uh, provide the USB de um, device directly to the virtualized kernel. And well, if you take a look, um, you may notice that um, this is useful for some man-in-the-middle purposes. And well, you're able to intercept the data for some reverse engineering or some dump fuzzing by changing some bits and bytes but you're also able to just implement your own server, and this is what we have done. And the architecture of our framework looks like this. Well, we got our uh, QAMO process, and we got a, Q a QAMO controller, which is, which is responsible for starting the QAMO process, and load snapshots. And I think virtual machine snapshots are well known. They're just safe states of the virtualized uh, operating system. And the interesting part is, uh, the uh, fuzzing infrastructure, well, we got um, some implemented uh, and written in Python, uh, some uh, USB emulators, and they are interchangeable. There is an API, and there is a fuzzer module, 
and the fuzzer module is able to intercept the communication and do some fuzzing and is also capable to uh, do some descriptive fuzzing by changing some information for the generic um, first initialization. And the, uh, the last part is the uh, monitoring module and well, the monitoring module is the, uh, interacts with the operating system over the serial port and if there is some misbehavior or a kernel panic or uh, other crashes, um, the, monitoring will, uh, the monitoring module will write the, uh, these events to log file and you can use them for, uh, for investigations. And well, this uh, architecture is independently and we, uh, we have no um, external USB hardware or physical USB hardware so we can scale and we scale. Well, um, we have to implement uh, a module for distributing uh, tasks and well, um, then you can use some multiprocessing or uh, clustering capabilities. And we got two modes implemented to this framework. The first one is just the reload mode. Um, well, with this mode you're able to test individual payloads and after uh, sending each payload uh, there is a, um, a, restore, uh, a restore of the uh, virtual system. And the second one is more, li is more like the phase dancer or real world. Well, um, you keep sending until there is a crash and something goes terribly wrong and just then you have to restore the system and yeah. And uh, this allows us to find some very interesting sequences of payloads which trigger some bugs. And yeah, this mode is, by the way, is uh, faster. And since every test case uh, is, uh, will, has its own uh, identification number, you are able to just uh, export sequences of them to files, import them, execute them, distribute them, and we will show their uh, reproducibility in the demo. And so the, the question in this framework is, are we, oh, okay, that's, that's okay. So the uh, question is, are we uh, faster? Yes, we are. Compared to other sequential running solutions like, uh, uh, like the face tensor board or our framework in the single processing mode, um, you're able to run up to 320 tests compared to um, just a half. And so you have, to, uh, you have to wait two seconds for just one test and, well, and we just run this, uh, these tests on uh, older Intel server systems, so this is not high end, you can do better if you want. And imagine you want to run one million uh, fuzzing tests. Well, uh, using the face dancer or other um, so, uh, USB fuzzing solutions, you have to wait almost one month to just do one million uh, fuzzing tests and if you just use our framework with the clustering capability, um, it's less than one hour. And well, let us show you a demo of our framework and yeah. Okay, now I take over again. And uh, Sega will try to show you the framework and how it works. And uh, we're trying to do it actually in real life. So we, Sega will now try to connect to one of, our, of the systems back in our home office and we'll try to show you the framework as it's actually working. Uh, and I hope it will work because the wireless Wi-Fi here is not very good and he's using UMTS and we're not really sure whether it will work. Uh, if it doesn't work, we have a, uh, screencast, um, but uh, first we want to try it uh, because I think it's uh, always more fun to actually see something actually being done uh, during such a talk. So, um, uh, we have prepared, uh, uh, Sega already told you that this framework um, gives each test case a unique ID, so you have to uh, to, to give you a better understanding, what we, when we talked about payloads, what we mean by payload is that we emulate a full USB device, send it to the virtual machine, and see how the uh, virtual machine reacts to it. And we can not just emulate one device, but we can disconnect the device again, emulate another device, disconnect it again, emulate a third device, and then we have a sequence of payloads. And we have prepared a couple of payloads. Uh, the framework supports an archive, um, uh, solution. So uh, uh, he says, just said, just one more second. So let's see how long a second is. Um, anyway, um, 
Uh, we have prepared uh, two virtual machines. We have prepared the Ubuntu 14.4 um, and uh, CentOS 6, which pretty much, uh, much means Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Current, we, currently, we're only running on uh, Linux systems. We're only testing Linux systems. Um, and uh, we're, we'll be sending a couple of payloads to them, and then we will show you the, payload, the, the framework actually in action. So... Are you ready? Hmm? Okay, he just told me that it's, uh, the, the uh, connection is not stable enough. We have to show the, the screencast. Okay, so show the screencast. I'm sorry for that, but um, I don't know if anybody of you tried the Wi-Fi here in this room. Uh, I, I think I had 76% uh, packet loss, so... Um, Okay. Um, come on. Okay, now we've got two screens here. And um, first in the screencast, uh, we will show you actually this archive function. So um, uh, he will uh, now do, um, uh, show you, us the archive. So there are several payloads prepared. Um, uh, the, we found much more already than actually crash systems. Uh, those are just the payloads we prepared for today. Um, and now we will start a CentOS 6 machine, uh, a virtual mach machine, and we will send this payload to the machine. Um, so this is, we're now in, inside a 2.632 uh, kernel, CentOS 6, and now we will send a payload to this machine. Um, and uh, as you can see in the back, the machine crashed. The machine is dead now. Um, uh, it's, we just plugged in one virtual USB device. Um, it's uh, just one device which misbehaved a little bit. So uh, we plugged in a device with a specific vendor ID and product ID and then told the system, oh, well, you wanted to read this descriptor or that endpoint. No, sorry, it's not here. And the device crashed, or the, the system crashed. Um, so uh, now he started CentOS 6 again, and we um, uh, load a different uh, payload and here now this is a sequence of payloads what you can see is that we have several times the enumeration phase so we plug in different virtual uh, USB devices one after the other uh, all in all there are seven uh, USB devices plugged in the machine doesn't actually crash immediately as soon as we start the uh, attack a second time the machine crashes so uh, there are sometimes uh, cases where we need actually different uh, misbehaving USB devices to get the operating systems to crash. Uh, our framework is capable of finding those, of reproducing those uh, in a way that a, even a, uh, a kernel debugger can actually test these then. That's one great feature of this uh, framework as well. So now we start in the Ubuntu system just to show you that it's not just Red Hat Enterprise Linux. Um, and we send a payload off to that machine um, and Again, those are several payloads which are sent. We have several enumeration phases. And it takes a couple of seconds, and the machine crashes. Um, by the way, that's the reason why we virtualized it, because uh, the enumeration phase, the plugging in of a virtual USB device and uh, detaching it again, takes some time. And if you want to do it um, uh, with a million tests, if you want to just change always uh, just a little bit, the, uh, using fuzzing, uh, you need to, to actually scale that to run it parallel. So now we want to show you the framework as it actually runs, and we will start 150 virtual machines at the same time, 100 virtual mach uh, 150 uh, guests, um, which are now attacked with different payloads, with different test cases. Um, and currently the system is running at uh, uh, 29 tests per second and will improve in speed. Uh, and we already see at the bottom the bugs that are found. So, so every time a payload uh, triggers a bug, uh, we will see it in logs. Uh, currently, we have, we have done 1,290 tests. Uh, we're running with 77 tests per second. Um, uh, we 
do have logs from older runs, and uh, we'll show you that uh, there are several bugs that can be found. Uh, we have a digest script, uh, and uh, you will see the digest script in just a couple of seconds in uh, the screencast. And that's an older run. Those are the unique um, bugs we found in that run. And all in all, there were 500, uh, 550,000 tests which were done. We found 4,000 bucks. There were 92 kernel panics. And unfortunately, you can't see it because it just uh, was cut off at the bottom. There, I think there were 66 uh, um, reboots needed to actually uh, get the system back into state and two or three sec falls. Um, and uh, this is just by fuzzing, just dumb fuzzing of the systems uh, in the device descriptors in other places. And uh, this is done by this framework, uh, very highly reproducible, um, so everybody can use it and reproduce these bugs as well. Okay. Yeah, question, okay. Um, well, those 4,000 bucks, um, uh, no, the unique ones were the ones you, you, you saw on, on the, uh, at the top. So uh, uh, the problem is, well, we haven't investigated these bugs yet. Uh, we, so we don't know either whether these bugs are exploitable. Uh, we don't know uh, whether these bugs uh, can affect other systems and stuff like that. So what we did is we just counted them. Those are the 4,000. And... Uh, uh, if you just take a look at the line where the bug tells us uh, at what, what offset in the kernel the bug occurred, we probably have within these 55,000 bugs or 55,000 tests, we probably have about 20 to 50 unique bugs. Uh, but still, um, if, you, if you actually want to do fuzzing, um, very simple fuzzing tests uh, need about 50 million, 20 million different tests. Uh, we've, with 55,000 tests, uh, 550,000 tests, we've just touched uh, the, the surface a little bit. And uh, Sega will tell you a little bit more about what we are planning to do. We're just scratching the surface yet uh, of the USB fuzzing we can do. Okay, well, um, so uh, we did, uh, we realized Linux monitoring by just um, configured the TTY on a serial port. And well, so uh, we got uh, our output. And this is quite simple. And of course, we want to do uh, Windows uh, fuzzing too. And yes, we uh, are aware of WinDebug. And yes, we have to test it and we want to implement it. And of course, there is the lame solution by just taking a picture or a VNC and look at the blue component. But this is not uh, Black Hat-like. And well, um, like uh, Ralph uh, already said, there are just some bugs and we did no investigation yet, and yeah, so, in, yeah. in addition, we want to implement more specific emulators, like emulators for Wi-Fi, USB, or so on, to go uh, deeper to the kernel and to uh, test more. And so, well, at the conclusion, you will see some of them. This is a small selection of some bugs we found, or we can uh, trigger. And yeah, we are surprised and shocked uh, of the number of bugs we found with our framework uh, on first test runs. And yeah, we also picked some of them and some uh, special of them to verify by using uh, the, fa uh, the face dancer board. And yes, this shows us that this is possible, that these bugs are no artifacts of the virtualization. And yeah, you can say in conclusion, this is faster than, as than anything else yet. And well, if you're interested in, in, in this project, um, we need help. And uh, yeah, you got the files uh, on the Black Hat D CD or, or on the Black Hat website and uh, on GitHub. And so if you're interested, just visit my GitHub. And yeah, are there any questions? Any questions? No question. OK, well. Um, Thank you very much, and uh, well, enjoy the rest of Black Hat. <laughs>